Hey everybody, it's Deetra. I am back with another love lesson. It's been a while. I haven't been as active um, as I wanted to be. A lot going on, but I'm back. And um, I actually have a guest today for another love lesson session. There he is. He's actually here. Yay. Hey, Mike. Um, I'm going to invite you in and then we'll get it going. Let's see. I just added you. There he is. What's going on, D? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me okay? I put these in so I know you probably can hear me better. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So uh, we're going to get right into it because, you know, when it's live, people come in and out. Um, but it'll be recorded so people can see it later. So any of right. you coming in, it's not that we're ignoring you. Uh, we are going to get to questions if you want to uh, put questions in as we're talking, but we're going to get back to it. Um, but I'm Deetra. For those of you who don't know me personally, I am a um, life coach. I'm an author. Here's my book right here. There's more in you. And I'm an educator. I'm a teacher as well. And Mike, um, he is a um, single man in his 30s, and I'm single too, single man in his 30s, and he is in, a, um, in the career of management at this point. And we're going to go ahead and get into the what do you think question. So the what do you think question is, are women too independent? Um, so we had a Facebook post. I think you put a Facebook post up about that. Our women, yeah. it was something similar, but it wasn't quite that. And it made me start thinking about this. Do you it, know it was basically saying, yeah, I mean, it was basically talking about, well, I was saying how a lot of men are scared of women who are, they think that independence uh, chases men off. I mean, when it's not, it's not that. I think it's just a lot of people are just scared. Once again, a lot of men are just scared of, the, of a woman who's really independent. See, I've heard like a couple of different perspectives. I've heard people that say that like a real man or whatever is not intimidated by any of that. And then I've heard women talking amongst themselves um, saying, oh, girl, he's just intimidated by you. So at this point, I'm not really sure what to think because I'm not, I don't know. It's like two different perspectives. So anybody that sees this, please comment um, as you get on or as you see it, because I'm really curious about it. The different perspectives. Like, like I said, I think, like, you know what I said before when we talked about it before about how men, it, it's, it's three different type of them, like, a woman can be very independent and a guy can be nervous about that because he's going to feel like, oh, maybe she, you know, he's going to be too too scared, like, oh, she can do more than what I can do for her, things mm -hmm. like that. It's, and, and it's like you shouldn't be that way. I mean, they're going to have to have their own independence, you know what I'm saying, because, uh, number one, I mean, if a lot of people are single nowadays. A lot of folks are single. A lot of women nowadays, like I said, they're coming up. They've been they've been coming up. And, I mean, a lot of women are very independent. And that also comes just from a, a background of just, like we said it before, a lot of people, some people grew up in single parent homes and see how some parents came up independent. So they kind of took on that same role. But then also at the same time, some guys just mess, guys just mess it up. Just, I mean, point blank period, it just mess up. And I mean, to be independent is basically like, you cannot be like, I'm not scared of an independent woman. Actually, I'm not, I'm not going to really care what she has. It's going to be more yeah. so about her conversation and what she can do. It's not about her independence because I mean, at the end of the day, She's still going to do what she has to do for her career and everything like that. I'm going to say to do what I got to do for my career. And so you get to that point where y'all mesh together. That's when the independency might, you know, kind of change up a little bit. But until then, you, you will want to, you should have want her to be in, uh, independent because you shouldn't want her to have to depend on you or things like that. But work together. Yeah. So do you, I heard a lot there and it was really helpful for people, especially if you, have just become single and you just don't know what to do, which is why I started doing these love lessons and sessions with different people. Because when you, right. if you've been married or in a relationship and then you got to get back out there again, then you're like, I don't even know. 
Like you just have so many questions. And then women, yeah. we um, there's a lot that we have to do to put ourselves together and make ourselves presentable. And then we have all these other questions like, am I too intimidating? Like, am I, do I come off as intimidating to men? So I heard you say in some respects it could be yes, but then in other respects, no. And then I also heard there's levels to it. So as you're dating, maybe not, but then when you get in an official relationship, then right. It could be a problem, but how? Like, what do I guess? What I'm trying to get at is, what can women do to kind of prepare, from a man's perspective, uh, for that level of relationship? If you don't want to come off as intimidating, you know what I mean? Because you can't just switch up out of nowhere, you know. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. You ain't going to – nobody, if you just switch up, basically you just cope into somebody else's feelings, and then at, the, at that time you start to lose yourself. So you don't want to just switch up immediately. You got to work towards that. Because, I mean, once you switch up, somebody is going to be taking care of the other person more, coping to their feelings and being quiet about what they got to share and, and things like that. But, yeah, you have to – when you – like I said, when you're single, I mean, when they get to that point where I said where they mesh together, you, you'll start to, the independence will start it'll start going away what I mean by that is like y'all start working together more you'll start doing things together but when she's I mean point I mean like I said as a woman you're not going to want to sit here and lose your independence just because you're talking to somebody and the intimidating part I'll just say basically from what I have seen in the past or less like recent I mean that's being out here or whatever they carry it like this like when you try to talk to them, it's like it's a hard, it's a hard way to try to talk to them. It's like it's not, it's not a. Uh, even if you present yourself like, "Hey, how you doing? Nice or whatever," it's still like a, "Hey," or you know, it just, it's it just that little. Sometimes I think that it's, it's a little bit the, the attitude is intimidating. That's oh, what it is. so is that why they're always like smile? And I'm like, I think from my perspective, I'm always like, "Hey, I'm doing good. And somebody random dude is how I'm looking at him. And he just says, well, smile sometimes. And I'm kind of like, if you know me, you know I smile all the time. So I kind of got my resting right. face on, right? When I'm like pumping gas or something like that. And that's kind of their way of flirting. So I guess a tip for the ladies is just not to, um, I'm trying to say this without like a curse word, but your resting face. You need to clean that up, basically, because that's intimidating. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of okay. them got that that face where you like it's not it's not a it's not a, a face you would want to walk up to. Some people ain't scared like me personally. I'm not going to care what kind of face you have. I mean, I'm just I'm more likely I probably won't even send up until you anyway because if I see I'm like oh I ain't gonna speak. But they, I mean, you do need to change up your facial expressions and like I said, mm -hmm. and then also too, not only that for the women, but the men gotta. They gotta present themselves better than what they be presenting themselves as, you know. That a yo or hello or you know, just a little. I mean, just be yourself. Don't be doing all yeah. that extra, extra stuff. You know, that's what messes it up too a lot. Okay, so I think I got it. With it's not that women are their independence is intimidating. It's more of the way their attitude. Is that? Their attitude. Yeah, it, sometimes, uh, yeah, the attitude more than anything. It's, it's, it's like the independence and everything is cool. It's just the attitude. It's just like, I mean, they always say like black women got these attitudes. No, all women have attitudes. I don't want to, mm -hmm. I ain't going to stereotype. All women, all women have attitudes, but sometimes it's the way that, it's the it's the way you talk, the way your the attitude is. That's what, that's what kind of throw guys off a lot. Okay, so just to clarify, here's a follow-up question to that. How can so it's not the independent thing, so we're kind of getting a little bit into it a little more than what I was thinking initially. So, how can a woman what do you guys find as feminine? Because basically, it's kind of to be walking around looking all mean, that's kind of masculine from my point of view. Like, you know, that's what dudes do. <laughs> so, as a lady, I guess we should walk around and be a little more feminine in the way that we move. What do you, what is the kind of thing that you guys uh, I know the smile is a big one. Is there anything else as far as um, so that we're not coming off as too um, our attitude doesn't seem too intimidating or too masculine? Uh, I mean, honestly, 
I can't even speak. It just, it's just one of them. I wouldn't say change up because you know some some I ain't gonna lie. Men take advantage of that too. Don't get it. Don't get it wrong. I mean, you don't want to be walking around here with a cheesy face all the time. Like, hey, hey, okay. hey, hey, you know, <laughs> you know, okay, you no. Know, I mean, cause cause somebody's gonna take that. Like you might you might just be saying hey, and then I'm gonna be real. Some guys gonna take that as like, oh, she trying to talk. She trying to talk. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, like I said, you just gotta. I mean, basically be yourself and just do. This women mostly just be yourself. Just like I said, but the ad. Just be yourself. It ain't, okay. it ain't nothing about it. To be yourself. That's what Sam just said. I see you, Sam. Um, he said, just be yourself, to be honest. Um, I think oh, so with I, the knowing, I'm, I'm always reading the comments. Huh? I ain't even reading the comments. I ain't even okay. know he was commenting. Yeah, I'm, I'm always myself, but I think I do get annoyed with the comment about, well, smile more. And, you know, don't tell me how to be me. That's where the attitude comes from. <laughs> I'm like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that um so basically i hear that a lot from guys as far as just be yourself but another thing that i hear from guys is a lot of judgment so when i am out here being myself and i don't know if ladies if you see this if this happens to you too then it's like um i feel critiqued sometimes and that's annoying i mean it is what it is but it is annoying as far as you're not smiling enough or trying to read me and things like that. And that's what makes it uh, where some women that are a little insecure, they'll just switch up who they are in general. And then guys get mad, right? Y'all get mad about it and say, well, just be yourself. You should have just been yourself. But then when I was being myself, then you're critiquing everything that I do. Personally, I don't care. But some women, you know, and I have been in a position where I did care. And I would call my girls and be like, um, I saw Joy get on here. Joy, are you still on here? I call, that's one of my BFFs. I call um, one of my friends and say, I did this. And then he said this and then this and that. And then we just go back and forth um, with it and overthinking it. And men don't know that we're thinking about them as much as we are. <laughs> that's what's crazy. That's true. That's true. So I, I, like, like I said, I was saying. out here. I mean, We're trying it, out it, here. Don't what get, is like Sam a... saying? The right type of man will know when, why, and how to approach a woman whom can be themselves and honest. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that. So every comment I may not get to, but I thought that was definitely um, relevant for the time. I try to go back through the comments right. for those of you that that comment. I invite you in to comment, um, but I do agree with that wholeheartedly. That the right type of man, he's not going to be like you just said. You're not intimidated by just because she's not smiling in that moment. Right. And, and yeah, and that's, I'm going to be honest with you. That's just the type of, that's just the way for men to invite themselves into a conversation to say, I mean, think about it. What's the typical thing you hear the most? Smile more. And you might just be just cool. You know, like I said, it's just a typical thing a guy going to use uh, to join into a conversation. I mean, okay. that's that's all it is. So we're taking it too serious. I know I'm not the only woman that has thought that, like, what are you talking about? So don't take yourself that seriously, basically. <laughs> like, it's not that serious. It's just nah, an open. Ain't nothing that serious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think um, when you're nervous about dating or um, just nervous about getting out there, sometimes you do take everything, like, super serious. <laughs> and it's not that serious. You don't even know this person. Um, he could be married. There's a lot of those folks out there. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, another question is, is there anything that is a turnoff about a woman being independent? Is there any stories that you can think about where you're like, that was too much? That was way too much. By in being independent? No, nah, I mean, actually, no. I mean, it, it's, it should be a turn on, actually, to see that she's independent because I mean, nine times out of ten, you mostly hear the guys. I mean, you hear the typical stories of the, not. I ain't gonna say this about all women, but you hear mm -hmm. the forty percent of the more or like, oh, she want this, she want that, she want this, and she wants that. But you never hear the stories of oh man, she got her own thing, she do her own thing, she hey, she take care of everything. The only thing we do is when we go out to take on a date, I might I'ma pay, and you know, but she still do her own thing, you know. And I, I think that's one of the parts right there. I mean. Uh, a turn off? No, nah, it shouldn't be a turn. If it's a turn off, then I mean, you approach. That's a that's the wrong type of man you're talking to. I ain't gonna lie. 
Because I mean, I don't want no woman. I want a woman who's independent. What I mean by independent meaning she's taking care of her business. See, people get independent, taken differently. Taking care of her business, her house, cars, you know, her job. If she got kids, taking care of her kid, making sure that she's doing everything she's supposed to do. That's independent to me. You know, the other stuff, you know, I mean, that I think that's just a weak man if he can't, if he said it's a turn off, honestly. If he says it's a turn off in any way, it's a weak man. So, what about once you do get to the point to where you want to be exclusive? And I feel like men that really care about you, they're going to want to do stuff for you. Um, what yeah, about the are. woman that's like, no, I got it. I got it. She doesn't even want you to necessarily pay for anything. She's just, I got everything. Is that too much? Or is that, it depends on the situation. Well, what I just learned from the pastor, he said, when somebody said they got it, let them take care of it. That's a blessing. So that's your blessing. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it do. Yeah, that that will like definitely it, it will kill a man. It, I say this, it will hurt a man's self, not like his esteem. Like when she always say, I got it, I got it, I got it. I mean, it, it, he going to be looking like, dang, why you, I mean, I'm trying to take care of it. Then, you know, so he, I mean, he might look at it that way too. Some people will look at that like that. I mean, uh um, that is a big thing right there. So that's basically blind. That okay. I hear the uh, background. I know you're outside. Right, so I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I'm gonna wait yeah. for just a hot second. Um, hey right. Donna. I saw you came in. Okay. Um so I know I'll tell this is a quick story. There was a guy that I was dating. And he was like, of course, he's paying for everything, everything, everything. And after a while, I felt like I want to give back. I want to do something. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take you out. So I'm going to come get you. I didn't open the door or anything. But I did go get him. And, um, you know, I drove. And we went to a restaurant, a nice restaurant and all that. And I felt like he felt a little uncomfortable because it was just something that I had been wanting to do. But I saw him, like, visibly feel uncomfortable with it. Um, but it was a fun exercise for me. But I, that's where I feel like with certain kind of men, it is a turn off because they they want to, they like those traditional roles. Like, they like being the man. So right. women have to kind of balance it, I guess, because it, it definitely was too much. He liked that the fact that I was wanting to do that and that I actually did. Cause when I asked him, he's like, yeah, like, what do you want tomorrow? You know, he's like all on it. But then when it actually started happening, he was like, this is weird. You know, yeah. like, I don't know how yeah. I feel about this. So yeah, it, it is. That's one. That is one. Like, I mean, I think we, we talked, matter of fact, we talked about that. Talk that's about the one that we talked about where, yeah. Remember when I said that basically it was like, you know, if a man keeps taking a, after a man keeps taking a woman out, taking her out, taking her out, taking her out. Sometimes a man, at the at the at the end of the day, he, I say always say it's always good to re, like what I say about return the favor, like like you just said. Hey, let me take you out or something like that. You know, it's gonna feel weird because I ain't gonna lie, I ain't used to no woman doing nothing like that, paying for stuff like that. I ain't, I ain't used to that, so I'm gonna be like, I don't look kind of sideways, like I ain't, I ain't never seen a one to say, hell, no, I got the checkbook or something like like when they bring a check. Yeah, they, they heard man. They they bring a check. You know how women get? They start looking at their phone. Ain't nothing even in their phone. They start looking for something else. You know. So yeah. Because, they, they, but yeah, I mean, that it is. It's he probably did. I mean, I I'll say this. He probably felt like wow, like she doing that. But it's kind of like you know, now it's like a little weird feeling. Like you ain't if you ain't used to no woman doing that, then yeah. But you know, you got some guys who's used to that. Women just I know taking care of that. I had, um, so. I just heard a story. I'm not going to say who it was, but I just heard a story about a guy. Um, he said this woman, she switched up on him, but she was taking him out at first. Like, he was totally confused of why she switched up. Because he's like, I, I don't understand. Like, you taking me out and, you know, you making sure I'm good. And then you want to act like it's the other way around. Like, she basically called him in front of his, um, in front of her friends. And was trying to like make it seem like he had been doing all this stuff for her, but she actually had been taking him out and paying on for dates and stuff. So I thought that was the weirdest story, but I'm like, stranger things uh, happen. But this is a that, that, that's a, ain't that a 
this is a um a question that I just thought about. Um the woman that wants to pay for the first date or the drinks, you know, when you just meet, is that too much? You're just meeting for the first time and she's like, No, I got it. I'll pay for my own. You don't have to pay like for anything for me. Like, would that be too much to say that? I mean, that's not too much. I mean, that's not too much. I mean, that's what she wants to do. That's what she wanna do. Now, I'm of course I'm gonna offer it. But I mean, if she doesn't, I mean, if she wants to take care of her own. I mean, I wouldn't be mad at her. Like, okay, you know. And then I, but you know, I got the next one. Then how about that? You know, what I'm saying okay. say something like that. So that that really doesn't have anything to do. Okay, so here is. Um, I had a couple of people ask some questions. Um, so this is a ladies want to know question. Let me see. What did she say? Um, how do you feel about? men settling down in their 30s. Um, I did ask you this before, so you should be a little bit familiar with it. Um, I feel like um, I think this, and I know other uh, women feel like this as well. Um, it seems like men in their 30s are really comfortable with casual dating, and they're not really looking to settle down. Generally speaking, like what, what kind of differences do you see um, in different races or just in general, like with black men versus uh, white men or other races or what, what, uh, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts? Mm, I ain't really want to bring race into it, but if you want to be, te I mean, if you want to be technical, I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak real. I mean, more traditional white families, you know, they grow up in the, you know, mom and dad married and things like that. So if you ever notice that, if you ever notice most typical, you know, college, like the, uh, when it comes to the, you know, the white uh, families, like for instance, the kid go to college, they in their 20, they acting wild, they acting crazy. You know, they start, when they got to college, they start to settle down, they start to get their stuff together. Next thing you know, they're married by like 30, 20, 30s. Yeah. You, know, you start noticing that. Now with us, I mean, don't get me wrong, because we do have families that are married. And I mean that they do the same typical, I mean, the same routine, but more than anything, you know, it's a lot of, uh, I say in the thirties nowadays, I just say it's a, it's a field. And I mean, it's like a really big field that you can play in. Okay. And I think that some people are scared. Some people are scared and uh, like a lot of black people are scared because, uh, you know, the cheating and all that stuff goes around and people do this and all that. Like I said, the biggest thing is communication though. The communication part is just really lost. A lot of people don't have that communication skills. Like I think communication skills is getting lost because of social media. You can talk behind here, but when you in somebody's face, I think that you a lot of people lose that that communication skills. So typically, okay. I mean, yeah, you we have talked about that. Like just say what it is, and I think that's the biggest right. struggle because people don't want to be honest and. I know I talked to my dad a lot about relationships and he was basically saying in his thirties, he was just not ready. He was just not in the mindset. He dated all kinds of women, always been a very attractive man that women were interested in and he didn't have any problem with um, dating, but he just really wasn't in the mindset to really settle down. Even if he said he was like, he would just kind of go in and out basically. And a lot of us deal with right. guys going in and out where they, they come on real strong, and then it's like, you don't hear from them. You're like, well, what happened to Craig? Like, I thought we was going to be together forever, <laughs> you know? It's the, it's, it's the chase. That's the, that's the, the chase. chase, though. You know, that's the chase. That's the chase game, you know, that's out here. A lot of people, uh, just being honest, just speaking real, that's the chase game. You know, a lot of people love, we were just saying that, like, sometimes some people love that chase. Mm -hmm. And then after the chase is done, after you get, after you done, you like, okay, all right, let me chase. Now I'm ready for another chase, you know. Uh, it just guys in the 30s, I mean, it's yeah, you're right. I, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, certainly don't get it wrong. Not all guys is like that, though. Yeah, of course. Like, a lot of guys, there's some guys out here who ready to settle down and ready to do what they got to do, but it's a lot of other guys out here who ready to play the field. And I ain't gonna lie, they mess it up for a lot of guys when it's time for like that guy that's in the 30s ready to settle down. Now that girl's thinking like, he ain't ready to settle down because the last guy that did X, Y, and Z. So now she has I call it last guy syndrome. So now he's getting last, the last guy syndrome. Guy so now, loved it. Yeah. So she she's he's getting like the new guy is now getting last guy syndrome. So now he's kind of like he's trying to work it out, but then he's getting upset because like dang, like she ain't saying, but you can tell 
what she went through with the last guy. Because, you know, y'all, y'all usually tell, like, you tell, y'all tell us a story. Like, I ain't about to do that again. I ain't about to do that again. Yeah, uh-oh. There go my girl. Debbie, um, she said, uh, Mike, I wasn't even ready in my 30s. <laughs> 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 so this is from a female. I wasn't ready in my 30s. So I think I'm, I've been uh, saying I'm ready, to be honest. She know all of my stories, so um, I've been saying I'm ready and uh, not so much. <laughs> I'm just, I have certain things that I want, but like for the real relationship, like we together, this is us. I think um, it's still, I'm still not quite there. So I, you've got to be honest with yourself though, because most of us are not honest. I think uh, personally, huh? That's true. I mean, everybody long for they, they, you know, loneliness is. I mean, everybody long for loneliness, like that loneliness. Thing. So you want somebody to fill that void, but sometimes when you got somebody in that, for a minute you like, I don't know, you know, I like kind of start to play like, I don't know, I don't think I'm, you know, ready for all that. And definitely, if you've been married before or you've been in a relationship, a long, long term relationship, and you just get out of it, you kind of like. That's another reason why a lot of people probably ain't ready in their 30s because they probably would, most of them be in them long-term relationships, high school, all the way up until they're 25 years old. Yeah. So now they're ready to play. I mean, not play, but they're just ready to see what's out there, ready to just be them by themselves. Yeah. So I think I personally struggle, and I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but this is one of the reasons why I started doing this is because as a woman – it's like you're judged if you don't want to be in a relationship, you know? So, especially who does that? if... Now, who's judging you? I feel society judges you. I'm not saying it's a person that's on this, you know, throne judging you for it, but I feel like society overall judges you for not being in a relationship. So, if you choose to be single, everybody wants to... I've even had guys come up to me and say you know, you're single, what's wrong with you, basically? Like, you you know, you got this going, you got that going, you got this going, and you're single. Why is that? So I hate that feeling. So that's why I was like, let me go ahead and just put it out here. You know, this okay to be single, because I know I'm not the only one that feels that way, but if I'm single by choice, because everybody's glorifying relationships, like marriage, and I'm not saying it's bad, because I would like to be married again one day, but I really need this time. You know what I mean? But because society says you haven't made it until you're married, you know, it's like there's a part of me that, that pulls towards it or that moves towards it because I know that's what society views as a successful person. So if you have um if you have children i really feel bad when people don't have children they choose not to have children because it's like basically you got to get the career you got to get the the husband for a woman you have to have your kids you know or you're just considered less than and i'm like that is not the case so anybody that's watching this the replay because i know people have been coming in and out as far as the live but the replay if you're watching this, it's okay if you choose to be single for a season. It's completely okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Just want to emphasize that. Is, that, that is true. Emphasize that. So, that, that uh, you know, that, go ahead. Oh, no, I said that, that is true to be single for a while. Because sometimes you need to collect yourself and you need to, you might need to see what you need to like. I mean, after being in a relationship, you might need to collect yourself like, what did I do? that I can do better in my next relationship. You know, start, you know, keeping your own little goals of what you're going to do in your next one. So when you do me, it's like you can't say, well, I did, I felt like I fixed everything I didn't do in my last relationship. I did it in this one. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe it is really not me, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it might just be the people that I'm meeting. But, yeah, I would say sometimes it's good to be single for a little season and, have, and get yourself together uh, and, yeah. and start understanding what you need to do. Yeah. And I think some people have more to sort out than others because personally, I'm kind of a slower decision maker. So I know even recently what I thought I wanted was not what I wanted, you know? So I had this picture of mine, like this kind of guy I want. And then somebody similar to that showed up or really close to it. And I was like, 
I don't think I want that anymore, you know? So, I mean, you got to give yourself room to do that. So, Sam is on here killing it with the comments. Let me see what he said. What he said. Be patient with yourself, and being single is really an amazing feeling to understand your own value for your life and next relationship. Boom. Drop the mic. That was really good. That was really that was good. good so, question Sam, for you. Good, what Sam. is your... Huh? No, I was saying that was a good one for Sam. Sam, that was really nice on that one. That was good. What is your um, greatest love lesson? Greatest love lesson? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> teacher, you're teaching hey, you us. Yeah, what's your greatest uh, love greatest? lesson? We got to give them some love lessons. The greatest, I mean, I ain't going to say greatest love lesson, but the only thing I can say, if you really want to be uh, one with your partner, I, I feel like you got to, y'all got to be each other's best friends. You know how you got a best friend outside. You got your girl best friend. I got my guy best friend, but y'all really need to be best friends, like for real, seriously. Like y'all need to know each other in and out. I mean, everybody be saying they don't need to know everything or they don't need to know this and then yeah yes they technically do that's your partner that's your partner and that's the per person you wake up to every morning or you're going to see so i feel like that's the person you want to always share you know when things are going on and also is this the biggest thing and love lesson is communication because a silent silence can silence can kill a relationship mm -hmm. so I, I think communicate uh, communication is going to be the biggest key of everything to keep something going communication and be, being vulnerable is what I'm hearing. And one of my... Yeah, a lot of men ain't vulnerable. Huh? A lot of, yeah, I meant to say that. I, I meant to catch up, but yeah, a lot of men got to stop that. It it, it, hurt, it irks me when I hear that, like, I ain't trying to be vulnerable to her. No, I'm like, man, you're not vulnerable. I mean, you talking to me. You mean, you talking to your guy. I don't believe... I, I know how you are. You ain't no soft guy, but at the same time, when you with your woman, go ahead and be soft. Man. What's, what's, why you got to be all tough? She know that you ain't she know that you ain't so, but at the same time, it's good for them to get that side of you because as men, definitely today, and I and I, somebody said this to me a long time ago, it was this, uh, this old guy, he said, society taught us to be tough instead of being uh, vulnerable, to, uh, vulnerable to speak about our feelings. Like he said, watching The Simpsons growing up, you always seen, or watching all these different TV shows growing up, he was always taught, you got to be tough, got to be tough. You know, you can't share, don't, no, you got to be tough. No, nah, you really need this. I mean, open up. I mean, that's the thing with men now. That's why we got this built up anger because we always so holding in so many things that we actually, if you just let it out to that to that person and stop saying, "Oh, I feel burned up," are they going to use it against me? Yeah. No. I mean, don't. I mean, if they use it against you, oh well, so be it. I mean, go. I mean, oh well. At the same time, just know how to. You know, you can't nobody beat you with your own weapon that you know about. So this, I mean, you share your information. So you should feel good. Like, listen, I gave you information to help me or so you can learn about me. That can help us. And if they don't, then so be it. You know, but don't be scared. Don't be, man, you need to stop being on that tough macho stuff. Because, I mean, be vulnerable to your woman when you're out there talking to her. Yeah. And I guess it takes time to get to that point, you know, because you, you've got to build the relationship, the friendship, so that yeah. you can trust the person enough to share how you really feel. So correct. one of the um, love lessons that I've learned with going through, you know, being single um, is the more that I love myself, the less I care about what other people think. So even if I am dating and, you know, I care about I'm starting to care about this person um, because I love myself so much, I can be vulnerable with them because even if they if they judge me, reject me or whatever they do, I know that I'm OK. You know, so right. some people need to um, need this person there. It's like a codependent type of relationship that they start. So they really, really need right. that person there. And that's why they don't want to be vulnerable because they feel like they might lose the person. So I think right. what we both said kind of connects together. So and then um, that I think would be the last question that I had. I didn't see, let me see, um, I don't think I saw anybody asking questions. I saw people coming in. Um, so I'm just yes, going to thank everybody that has been watching. Um, but anybody that does have a question, um, 
now is definitely the time. I'm waving at everybody. I'm not shouting out everybody in here. Um, but I'm waving at everybody because I want to just acknowledge everybody that did come on um, the live. And um, shout out to those that did comment. Um, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. But before we do, okay. um, Mike, if you have anything going on or if you want anybody to follow you, uh, where can they find you? Uh, really on my Facebook, Mike Jones. I know it's a common name, but I mean, yes. I don't really have nothing much going on. I really don't have much going on. I mean, you know, I do post some little stuff that I come to me, but uh, I don't really have much, but they can follow me on Mike Jones that page right now. That's on this page. Okay. Um, and I just, I really, really appreciate, I want to reiterate, I really appreciate you doing this. I know I had to cancel, reschedule and all that kind of stuff a couple of times. Right. And but we finally right. did it, and you were completely awesome. I think Sam did say that in a comment, and I completely agree um, that you were completely awesome. Maybe you'll have your I know you had talked about a podcast or something coming up, so maybe you'll do something like yeah. this because it was really, I think a lot of people are going to learn a lot from this. And for anybody that's watching, um, this is for um, singles over 30. Um, so if you are interested in uh, just having a conversation, uh, about, uh, what it's like, you know, I've even at this point, I'm okay with you shooting a topic over that you want to talk about and, uh, we'll just talk about it. Cause I think it's really helpful for people to learn from other people's experiences that's actually out here. So the married folks, they got a lot going on to encourage them, um, in their journey. So we got to get some stuff going on too. So um, right. definitely leave your comments, um, hit the like button, hit the heart button, share this video. Um, feel free to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe if you like this, because this is where I'm uploading it for now. And then I'll be transferring it over to a podcast. And then if you're interested in having the conversations, females or males, um, then reach out to me and we'll set it up. So until next time, I always say that there's more in you um, and don't give up on love. Thanks, Mike. Okay. All right. No problem. Okay. All right.